is never easy being a beginner. In Pickleball, you have a lot of helpful people who sometimes inundate you with advice. Unfortunately, not all of it is good advice. Today, I'm going to talk about some of the things that are hurting your play the most that I rarely hear mentioned on the courts. And it's not just hurting play for beginners. Hey everybody, I'm CJ Johnson. Welcome to Better Pickleball. This channel is dedicated to helping players over 50 live their best lives on and off the courts. If you want to stay in the know, make sure you hit the subscribe and then the bell notification. When I was planning this video, I wrote down the mistakes that I see made most often out on the courts. I sorted through them to pick the ones that I thought were causing people the most amount of problems. And I'm talking about problems in terms of getting better and moving up in levels. They're not just causing beginner players problems. The things I'm gonna talk about today are causing people problems after they move up in levels, then it becomes even harder to change. By the way, make sure you stick around to the end. I have some additional videos that will help you to eliminate these mistakes. One of the first mistakes that I see is a bad grip. And when I say bad grip, I say a grip that's more in the palm of your hand versus in the fingers. When you are in the fingers, you have control. When you have the grip in the palm, the tendency is to come underneath the ball to begin with, right? Which is an upward, high upward motion. And then we have an extremely open paddle face. So this is the problem that it causes when you have a grip that's too much in the palm. is a continental grip so that your hand looks like this it's more in the fingers if you happen to look down and you have a grip that looks like this so it's laying more across the center of your palm make sure you hang out and at the end of this video I've got something just for you mistake number two that I see is a poor footwork and I think there's a lot of ways that there's poor footwork it's movement up here at the line it's being flat-footed but the most common problem I see is either not using a split step or not knowing when to split step so I'm gonna go to the back try and show you what I see and then show you what it is I'd like you to do So I'm still running as the ball comes back to me. What I need to do is the minute I see the person on the other side of the net ready to hit the ball, I need to split step. So I stop, I split step, I'm on the balls of my feet. That allows me to move in either direction. So we're gonna play that again. And this time I'm gonna use the split step. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> and now I'm up and I'm ready to play by using the split step. Another problem that I see is controlling the height of the ball which I think in most cases comes from an inability to control the speed of the ball. When a pickleball is losing speed, it doesn't bounce as high. Newer players tend to make strokes that are very long. The longer the stroke, the more speed that you can add to the shot. Conversely, the higher the shot you may get. 
One of my favorite drills to shorten the paddle stroke is to have somebody stand where there's a fence. It works if somebody is have, it takes too big a backswing in the ground stroke. As you come back to get prepared for a ground stroke, the fence is here. It only allows me to go back just a little bit behind my leg and then I have to swing through. So I'm back and through, back and through. So if you think that long stroke is giving you some problems, a fence can be your best friend. The next thing I see is trying to do too much too soon. Meaning when you first start out, if you can focus on the serve, the return, and the third shot and making those consistent, you're probably going to win more points as well as more games. What I see too often is people, as they start to either learn how to dink or learn how to hit returns, they try to put a lot of spin on it or try to hit it extremely hard, doing more than they're capable of, which causes them to make a mistake. Even if you haven't played pickleball long, you have heard, or probably have heard, that you want to hit the return deep. Now, you may not know why. You want to hit the return deep so that it causes the serving team difficulty with the third shot. Now, what may surprise you is this. Mark Renison did some unofficial statistics back in 2018 at the Nationals. And what he found is professional players hit 79% of their returns towards the baseline. Care to guess how many on the uh, non-professional side? 29%. So less than 30% of the returns were actually hit deep, and that's in tournament play. You'd be better served by trying to hit a deep return versus trying to put a lot of spin on the ball or a lot of pace on the ball. Hit it a little higher if you need to. That allows you some time to get to the net as well. So work on that part of the game before trying to get too fancy. One of the next problems that I see is trying to attack shots that are not attackable, not being patient enough. So what do I mean by shots that are unattackable? Um, Shots that are below the net, you have to do something, typically top spin it up, to get it up and over the net. You'd be better off waiting for a shot that comes above the net to attack. So let's run through, Jeannie and I are gonna dink a little bit, and you'll get a chance to see the ball bouncing. When the ball's apex of the bounce is below the net, that's much less attackable than when it comes up above the net. So we wanna be patient on those. What you'll notice is as Jeannie and I dink here, the shot, the apex of the ball is below the net. something up from underneath. So spend some time working on this, looking at the apex of the bounce, and think about shots that are attackable versus unattackable.
Now this one I hear discussed a lot. This one is staying at the baseline. And I'm not just convinced that people don't know why that's a problem. And yes, there are some instances, there are some single players who can play a great baseline game and that's good for them. But for the most part in doubles, you want to play up at the net. And the reason why is time. When you are at the net, you are taking away your opponent's time to react. You have closed the distance between the two of them. When you stay back at the baseline and take your time away. So here's an example of what that looks like. So Jeannie's at the net, I'm at the baseline, I am not gonna move in, I'm gonna stay back here. And what you're gonna see is she has all the time in the world to react <laughs> or to plan, and I'm reacting. I'm just simply trying to keep the ball in play. She is offensive, I'm defensive. Go ahead, Jeannie. I'm at her mercy this whole time. She can drop it short, she can hit it deep. She has plenty of time to look at what I'm doing and choose the shot. All I'm simply doing is reacting and keeping the ball in play. I'm defensive, she's offensive, and that's a difficult point or a difficult situation to score any points. Now that you understand the mistakes, here's a playlist that will help you to fix the things that plague you the most. If you got value from this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your pickleball playing friends. Together, we can train smart, live bold, and age well.